Hi, I'm Aida. We meet again. This video is about two subtopics, classification of enzyme and also enzyme technology. Enzymes are named by adding the suffix "-is", at the end of the name of the reaction it catalyzes, such as dehydrogenase or decarboxylase. And enzymes also are named by the substrate it modifies, such as lactase or maltase. You might be thinking, how about pepsin? Pepsin doesn't have the suffix "-ase", at the end of the name of the reaction it catalyzes. Actually, pepsin was discovered and named in 19th century. We have so many enzymes. How do we classify it? They are grouped into six classes based on the type of reaction of enzyme catalyzes. They are oxidoreductase, transferase, hydrolase, lyase, isomerase, and ligase. This classification is based on recommendations of Nomenclature Committee of the International Union of biochemistry and molecular biology. As I mentioned just now, there are six classes of enzymes. Oxidoreductase catalyze oxidation reduction in which oxygen and hydrogen atoms are gained or lost or transfer of electrons Example, NADH dehydrogenase. Next, another class is transferase. It catalyzes transfer of functional groups from one substrate to another, such as hexokinase. Then we have another class, hydrolase. It catalyzes hydrolysis of a substrate. Example, Dipeptidase. Lyase catalyzes formation or removal of a double bond with group transfer. Example, fumarase, PEP carboxylase. Isomerase catalyzes rearrangement of atoms within a molecule, conversion of a molecule from one isomeric form to another. Example, triose phosphate isomerase. Last but not least, ligase. It catalyzes joining of two molecules using energy derived from the breakdown of ATP. Example, DNA ligase. Enzymes have contributed greatly to the traditional and modern chemical industry by improving existing processes. They have a wide range of applications. Uh, these include their use in food production, food processing, and preservation, mainly used in baking industry, fruit juice, and cheese manufacturing uh, to improve their texture, uh, flavor, digestibility, and nutritional value. Besides that, Enzymes are used in cosmetics, washing powders, textile manufacture, leather industry, paper industry, biofuels industry, medical applications, and improvement of environment and in scientific research. Here are the industrial and medical uses of enzymes. You see here, uh, we have a protease, ligninase, glucose isomerase, lactase, a trypsin. Here are the examples enzymes use. A protease uh, used in baking industry to break down proteins in 
flour for biscuit manufacture. Lignin is used in paper industry to remove lignin from pulverized food. Glucose isomerase used in processed food to manufacture fructose syrup from glucose. While lactase is used in milk production, here uh, uh, they will produce lactose-free milk. Uh, while trypsin is used in medical, uh, uh, and it will remove blood clots and in wound cleaning. Enzymes are biological catalysts that speed up biochemical reactions in living organisms. Uh, these enzymes can be extracted from cells uh, and then used to catalyze a wide range of commercially important processes. In enzyme technology, uh, this is a subfield of biotechnology. New processes uh, have been and are being developed uh, to manufacture both bulk and uh, high added value products. Enzymes attached to or retained within insoluble or inert support. This is also known as immobilized enzyme. Let's take a look at the advantage and also disadvantage of the immobilized enzyme. Enzymes can be easily removed from reaction, reuse, and can have continuous production. Enzymes do not contaminate the products. Okay, we can isolate the product easily. And generally, uh, the, the, they are more stable where they have greater thermal and operational stability. Okay, let's take a look at the disadvantages. Okay, there is possible partial loss of activity or catalytic properties some enzyme reduce or loss. Uh, there might be also change of the kinetics of the enzyme. This enzyme cannot move. So there is possibility that uh, the reduced production of products because only the substrate can move to find the enzyme. There are few methods of immobilizing enzyme. Absorption. Enzyme is attached to the outside of the inert material. This is the oldest method of enzyme immobilization. It is straightforward and simplest. Enzymes physically absorb or attach onto support materials. Weak bonds such as hydrogen bonds, when the walls process hydrophobic interactions, ionic interactions are formed between enzyme and insoluble or inert support. Support or adsorbers are ion exchange, resin, hydrophobic resin. No pore diffusion limitations since enzymes are immobilized externally. Entrapment. Enzyme trap in 3D lattice. They are trapped in a support or inside fibers. Substrates and products can pass through but not enzymes. Enzymes are trapped within a confined space or network. Enzyme not chemically bound and the polymers can be alginate, silica gel, polyacrylamide gel. This type of method is fast and cheap but have poor diffusion limitation. Okay, now let's take a look at binding. Covalent bonding. Uh, this is widely used uh, between enzyme and support material. The support material can be cellulose, collagen, synthetic agent. Okay, next is cross-linking. 
Enzymes are covalently bonded to each other, also known as copolymerization. Uh, covalent bonding between uh, various groups of enzymes support glutaraldehyde that act as protein cross-linking reagent. Enzyme can be denatured due to bonding. Okay, next, let's, let's take a look at encapsulation. Enzymes wrap in semi-permeable membrane. Example of the membranes are such as nylon, cellulose, nitrate. Lactose is a type of sugar found in milk. For lactose intolerant individuals, drinking milk or eating dairy products may result in nausea, bloating, abdominal cramps and even diarrhea. They are unable to freely digest the lactose in milk caused by having too little of lactase produced in their small intestine. This diagram shows generation of lactose-free milk using immobilized enzyme. Lactase is purified from yeast or bacteria and then bound to an inert substance such as these alginate beads. Milk is then repeatedly run through these alginate beads with immobilized lactase. Lactase enzyme breaks down lactose into glucose and galactose. The simple sugars can be absorbed directly into the bloodstream. This can be a good source of dairy for lactose intolerant individuals. Immobilized enzyme is used here. This enzyme can be used many times and it does not contaminate lactose free milk. You have learned enzyme or cell immobilization, which are adsorption, encapsulation, entrapment, covalent bonding, and also cross-linking. With that, we have ended our chapter 4. Please like and subscribe our channel. Thank you.